good afternoon. Happy New Year. Let's stand. We are ready to worship the great I am this afternoon. As we come into the first Sunday of the first year, we are here to worship. We are here to celebrate our living God, the King of Kings, our Lord of Lords, our Abba Father, our healer, our provider. Oh man, I could just go on and on and on. So let's go around and greet and love on one another. Let's hug some necks, shake hands, and we're going to worship together.
morning. He is so good. He is greatly to be praised.
It says whom the sun sets free is free indeed this morning. And we are free to worship. So come on, open your mouth. Raise your hands this morning. Let God know just who he is. He says, I'm a child of God. I am free. My father is the king of kings and the Lord of lords. I'm free to worship today. There is nothing holding me back. There are no chains on me. There's no condemnation in me. I can stand here today and worship the great I am who I call my Abba Father because I know who he says about me and nobody can take that away from me. If it says it in the word, it's true. So come on, we're gonna sing the bridge again. I am chosen, I'm not forsaken. I am who he says I am, no matter how young, no matter how old, no matter if I have a disability, no matter if I've not been in church all my life, if I've messed up in the past, it says, I am who you say I am. I am chosen, not forsaken. Yeah, 
Lord, we just thank you that you are our way maker, our miracle worker, that you are the one that shines the light in the darkness. God, we thank you that you are the one that never leaves us, never forsakes us, that you are always with us. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you. Thank you that you're always with me breathing life into me, giving me the strength to do what you've called me to do. We just worship you. We thank you that though the circumstances seem impossible, we know that you have a plan because you're God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Just tell him how much you love him this morning. We love you, Lord. You're the one. Hallelujah. Sing it again, Julie. Let's sing it again. and prepare for communion. As we, as we transition, communion is part of our worship. And I just want us to stay in a spirit of worship as we come to the Lord's table.
Pastor and I, Pastor Brenda and I will be preaching on today is on being resilient or bouncing back, knowing that things happen in life. I know that things happened in 2018 that maybe it knocked the breath out of you, but you know what? You're still here. You, you, you were resilient enough to get past it, right? Especially with God's help. You know, when we got the Holy Spirit inside of us, we know that we can overcome anything because he has overcome the world. And so, and so as we, as we take communion, it says as often as you do this, you do this in remembrance of me. Let's just remember how resilient we are with God in us. Amen. Amen. You know, nothing is impossible with God. And the circumstances may seem like there's just no way out or there's not an answer, but God always has the answer. And we just have to stay steady and walk through and know that there's a light at the end of the tunnel that know that he has the answer. I'm not saying you won't hurt. I'm not saying you won't be in pain. I'm not saying that it's easy, but what I am saying is that if you trust God, you will get to the other side. That's right. Amen. You know, and faith is not knowing, but knowing, if that makes sense. It's not being able to see it, but it's know that God can see it before you, and you trust the God that's before you. And so we're not trusting in our, our own abilities, or we're not trusting in our, ourselves being able to get over anything. We're trusting in that God loves us. And that as we lean into him and as we get our strength from him and as we get our confidence from him, we know that whatever is outside of us is not greater than that which is within us. That's right. And so by faith, that's how we overcome. By faith in Christ Jesus, by faith in the God that's in us is how we overcome. And the voice inside of you, which is the Holy Spirit, should be talking louder than the voices that Amen. are on the outside. That's of right. You. Amen. God and is so greater. you hear God's voice and you listen to that Thank voice. You, Jesus. That is the voice that is lighting your path. That is the voice that's directing you. That is the voice where you're going to get your answers. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. We thank you, Lord. It is our joy in you that gives us strength. Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. This is the Lord. This is the Lord. On the night that Jesus was betrayed, he took the bread and he lifted it and he blessed it and he broke it. And he said, as often as you eat this, this bread, you do so in remembrance of me. Father, we just thank you for the life of Jesus. Truly, God who became human, the word who became flesh and lived this life. There's no denying that Jesus, the historical Jesus, lived on this earth and we thank you that as this bread represents the body of Jesus Christ that we take it and we understand that healing has come by that also we thank you for it in Jesus name let's all eat the bread of the Passover that Jesus was betrayed, he lifted up the cup and said, this is the new covenant, the covenant of my blood. Of course, the disciples didn't know what he was talking about until the very next day. They had no idea. That kind of language was strange to them. But we know today that the cup represents the blood of Jesus Christ, Thank you. the blood that he so willingly spilled so that he could defeat death, hell, and the grave. So that we could sit here today in the saying that we have new life in Christ Jesus. That the old things are passed away and the all things are new. And so today as we drink, I want you to think about your new life. The new you. The old things are gone. And as we start this new year, the old things are gone. All of the junk, all of the garbage that the enemy tries to put back on you no longer belong to you. In 2019, you are the new and improved you. Amen? Yes. So as we drink this cup, do it with confidence 
knowing that the Holy Spirit lives on the inside of you. What was yesterday belongs to yesterday, and what's today belongs today. In Jesus' name, let's drink. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. We praise you, God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Would you stand with us this morning? Come on. We're going to sing. We're going to lift our hands. We're going to thank God that he is our miracle worker. He's always been there. So if you can, stand with us. Thank you, Jesus. We're going to sing. You are here. You're touching it. Yes, we do. I worship you. We're free to worship this morning. You are here. You're healing every heart. I worship you. I worship you. Waymaker, waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper. Light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. He's our way maker, way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper. Light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are here, young man. Like Pastor Brenda said today, with confidence and boldness. A way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. Oh, he's our way maker. A way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. Thank you, Father. I receive it, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank 
such a good God. He knows exactly what we need. He knows what ministers to us. He knows what we need to hear. Amen. He has the word. It is so true that one word from God can change your life. And it does. And it takes us from glory to glory to glory. How many of you are planning to go on to new glories in the year 2019? Amen. You know, the limitations that we see or the limitations of life or the busyness or the, you know, and the kids and the grandkids and, and, and all of these things that, that we face each and every single day. They're just obstacles that we have to overcome. And as we overcome these obstacles when, and begin to speak the word and speak the word over our situation, we know that through the power of the Holy Spirit, we can overcome anything. So look at your neighbor and tell them I'm an overcomer. So I expect in 2019, I want to do twice as much, three times as much. I want to do as much as the Holy Spirit will let me. Amen? And he's not putting any limitations on us, so he'll let you do whatever, whatever, right? Just step your foot out. So I'm challenging you today the things that every year as we come, a new year, there's new resolutions, there's there's a new revelation. There's new things that are on our list that we're going to get completed this year. So I decree and declare it's going to get done this year. So look at your neighbor and say it's going to get done. This is the year. Amen. 
This is the year you write the book. This is the year you make the record. This is the year you come, come committed. This is the year you tithe. This is the year that you do what the Holy Spirit is telling you to do. Amen? This is the year you get to change. And change happens on the inside of us when we decide we need a change and we want to change. And I tell you what, the older I get, the more I know that I have got to have more of the Holy Spirit in my life. I need his, I need his presence. I need his love. I need his guidance. I need what he has. And so you do too. And so 2019 is your year. Say it with me. 2019 in my year. Amen. It's my year. It's your year, right? It's fresh. It's here. It can be whatever we want it to be. Hmm. That came directly from the Holy Spirit today. Praise God. Amen. Well, it's good to have you all with us today. I'm so excited. Uh, 2019 is such a uh, just, you know, who would have... I don't know. It seems sometimes like we're living in a science fiction novel because 2019 seems like so far ahead. You know, when I was a kid, it seemed like so long ago and now we're here and time truly does go by fast. But the word that God gave me for 2019 was this. He said, put your seatbelt on and buckle up because it's going to go fast, but it's good stuff. Amen. It's a good stuff. The things that you have in your heart for a long time, you're going to see come to pass. The people you've been praying for for a long time, you're going to see them come to salvation. And we're going to see great moves of God this year in the name of Jesus. We've been praying a long time. How long, how long have you guys, y'all been praying a long time for this country and for the people, for revival? We're going to see it. Amen? Praise the Lord. Well, a couple of things I just want to... Um, run by you. You know that tomorrow we're starting our 21 day fast mark. If you could get those booklets for me. And what I've done is uh, Pastor Ross and I have printed it off a uh, prayer and fasting guide. And so you go ahead, you have a devotional for um, probably one for each family until everybody gets passed out. Um, but uh, you have a prayer and devotional guide for each day of the 21 days. And I want, you to, I want you to be challenged during this prayer and fasting. Now, of course, you can do a social media fast. You can do a media fast, and that all counts. But in my opinion, fasting is abstaining from food. That's my opinion. Now, if you want to add the other stuff, I think that's great. When I fast, I stay off social media. I don't go on it, and, and uh, I stay away from those things. Why? Because I want to focus on God. And so within the 21 days, you'll see there's a prayer. Uh, there's a place to journal. There's a place to uh, pray for people. And it gives you challenges about who to pray for. Amen? These guides are to get us all on the same page at the end of the 21 days. Who else needs one? We have some extras, so I know the Via Seniors probably need a couple more, don't you? Because, yeah. Oh, okay. All right. Anybody else need another one? Okay. All right. And so I hope by now you've decided, you've prayed about what to fast and how to fast. And remember, you know, you can go online. Uh, Jensen Franklin has some great tips on fasting. You can do a Daniel fast. A Daniel fast is no meat, no sweets, just vegetables and juice. You could do a Daniel fast. If you're taking medication, you do need to eat something. So I do suggest a Daniel fast. Always drink water. I believe in drinking water during a fast. I, I really do because you have to stay hydrated uh, because and let if, especially if you're continuing to work, look after your children and, and you know going about your daily business. You need some energy to do that. And you definitely need water. So these are just some things. Uh, I also want to let you know some uh, drink bottled water if you're fasting. Don't drink tap water. Um, it's got some minerals in it that can harm you because uh, your body is not eating food and it can't absorb the minerals. And so those are some practical tips to fasting. 
Uh, you can fast two meals a day, one meal a day, whatever the Holy Spirit puts on your heart. But this I want to challenge you. Do not do the same fast you did the last time. Make it a challenge for yourself. That's how we grow. Amen? Amen. And do with that. So anyway, there's some prayers there. And it tells us who to pray for each and every day. And we'll be checking in every Sunday and seeing how you're doing. Amen? 21 days. Hallelujah. We're going to be stronger. Right? We're all going to be on the same page. We're going to be ready for 2019. And in 2019, we're putting God first. Amen. Praise God. All right. So be blessed. A couple of other things. Let's see. We will be having Wednesday night Bible study this Wednesday night. It's at 7 p.m. And you guys know the location. Let me know if you don't. Uh, the other thing, any any birthdays? Well, Harley and Heidi, come on down. All right. We're going to sing happy birthday to you. Come on, Harley. Come on, Heidi. You guys are... You guys are too cute. And if you guys can see, Jared and Jen and Parker and Danny are with us today. Now, Jared's birthday is January 31st. So, Jared, why don't you come on down since you're here? We want to pray for you. Sing happy birthday to you. <laughs> All right, Harley and Heidi. Nope, I'm not done. Come back. Come, yeah, I know. We're going to celebrate your birthday today. All right. So, Julie, you stand and lead us in happy birthday to um, Harley and Heidi. Heidi and Harley. <laughs> Heidi, Harley. Rats, I thought I had it. <laughs> All right. So, Heidi, Harley, and Jared. All right. Happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you, happy birthday to Heidi, Harley, and Jared, happy birthday to you, yay. All right, Heidi, come here, come here, honey, come stand right here, reach your hands out to Heidi. Pray for her. All right. I'm going to pray for you, okay? So, Lord, we just plead the blood of Jesus over Heidi, and we thank you for her life, God. And we thank you, God, that you are leading her and guiding her. And, Lord, we pray and declare that she will follow you all the days of her life. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Okay, Harley, your turn. Reach your hands out. Let's pray for Harley. Father, we plead the blood of Jesus over Harley and Harley's life, God. We thank you that she's such a blessing to us all. And we decree and declare that she shall follow you all the days of her life. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. Now let's reach out to Jared, and we're going to pray for him. Oh, hi, Danny. He wanted to come up, too. All right. So, Lord, we plead the blood of Jesus over Jared, and we thank you for his life, God, and what a blessing he is to all who meet him. God, I just pray that every need is met, Father, as they uh, uh, make their way back to Maryland tomorrow, God, that you would go with them. Lord, I pray for wisdom for Jared beyond his years, God, that you would bless him with that this year. God, I pray that as 2019 comes to a close, that he turns around and he looks at it and he says, Surely the Lord was with me. We thank you for his life. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 All right, you may be seated. All right, girls. Happy birthday. Carol, you ready? So, Carol's going to come down and, and uh, uh, give you opportunity to give. But as your pastor, I want to challenge you. If you're part of this church, you should tithe. Amen? 
You bring the seed, you bring the tithe to where you're getting fed. And if you're getting fed here, then you should bring a seed and tithe. And here's what's the wonderful thing about giving to God is that you cannot outgive God. And when you give to him, he multiplies it. And then, you know, have you heard the saying, there's more month than money at the end of the month? Well, God reverses that. There's more money than month. In other words, you're able to get over the humps. You're able to be free. And I want to tell you something. Not everybody will tell you this, but you can look it up in Scripture. Tithing is connected to everything that you're believing God for. It's connected to your healing. It's connected to your relationships. It's connected to your relationship, of course, to God. And it's simply trusting God with your money. Amen? So that's my bit. Carol, I helped you out there. So it started you off. Thank you so much. I'm glad for that. I believe that this year is going to be the best year ever. I'm so excited. But I only have one scripture because Pastor Brenda has said it all. <laughs> and the scripture says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Who heals all of our diseases. And who redeems our life from destruction. Who crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies. And who satisfies your mouth with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. How many want to be like the eagles? Strong and healthy and well. And I don't know about you, but I do. Every time Satan tries to bring something against me, I say, Oh, no, not today, buddy. Get behind me. Get under my feet. Go where you belong. And I resist him. And that's the way we're going to do it this year. Can you say amen? Hold up your tithe. I'm going to ask Pastor Ross if he'll ask God's blessings on our tithe and offerings today. Father, I just thank you that we are here to give unto you. We're here not only to give of our finances, but also to give of our time, of our person, of everything that's ours. But Father, we give our tithe knowing that it's good ground that we give into. And we know that as we give, we receive a harvest. We thank you for it. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. I want to say one thing, too. Our women are going to be strong this year, right? Can you say amen? Women, we're going to be strong this year, and we're going to make our lives count for Jesus. Amen. amen. And men, you, I'm just going to lay down the challenge. You've got to be strong, too. Mark has got some things planned for you this year, right? So... All right, so be listening. It's coming up. Amen? Are y'all glad you came to church today? I leave tomorrow. Um, my plane leaves at 3.35 out of L.A. Yeah. Yep, yep. All right. All right, Children's Church. What side are you taking? I'm, I'm going on this side. All right. We're going to preach together. So we haven't done that in a long time. Woo. All right. Who's... All right, Miss Julie. Go with Miss Julie. Looks like fun. Lots of kids. All right. It's good. Hey, it's good to have you up here to be up here. I know. I don't want you to go tomorrow. <laughs> I don't want to either. I know. But we'll pray for you and we know that God's leading you and doing Absolutely. great things. Absolutely. Great things are happening. Amen. Let's pray. Amen. Father, we just come to you and we just thank you for the word. We thank you, God, that you speak to us. We thank you, God, that you lead us and guide us and direct us. Father, we just pray for the year 2019. Lord, I just pray for each person here that you will open doors that we thought could not be open. And God, that you, as we listen to your voice, God, that you show us the things that you want us to see. In Jesus' mighty name, everybody said amen. 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 And so today we're talking about turning your setback into a comeback. How many of you have had some setbacks? Absolutely. 
Just me? Okay. <laughs> Everybody's had a setback, right? And you know what happens when, when you're set back? The enemy comes against you, and then he starts whispering to you that you're a failure and that it's never going to work mm -hmm. and that what God spoke to you is not going to happen. And he begins to speak to you. And so today, as we come and, and we preach this word, what, what I hope that you take away is knowing that you're going to make it. That whatever setback you have, if we begin to apply the word of God, it can change into a comeback. Amen. Amen. And so we all fail from time to time. I mean, that's a given. But it's how we react to those failures do we get discouraged or do we pick ourselves up again and you know the bible is full of people just like you and me who have suffered setbacks and failures um but they refuse to quit and god turned their situation around the greatest comeback ever occurred when jesus was raised up out Amen. of the grave into everlasting yes, life hallelujah. he's our example now, we can celebrate the power of God that can bring us back even from the brink of death, and that's a deeper kind of comeback that God offers to everyone. And so we've all experienced failures. We've all, all experienced setbacks. We've all experienced those heartaches in our life, and in life we will have setbacks and disappointments. But failure, according to Webster, is a lack of success or falling short. And sometimes in life, no matter how hard you try, we fall short. It's all in the way that we look at our circumstances. And so you can make a decision to come back or you know, bounce back from failure, or you can stay in your darkness and feel sorry for yourself and have a pity party. And we know that when you have a pity party, only you are invited to the party. No one else is there. And so, you know, the depression will come in. And as the enemy hears what you're saying, he will take those words and he will throw the arrows at you. If you say, I'm so depressed today, he will hear that and he will throw that back at you and make sure you have plenty to be depressed about. Right. Amen? But... God has said that even though, John 10, 10, the thief comes but to only kill, steal, and destroy, I have come that you might have life and life more abundantly. So Jesus wants you to have an abundant life. So bounce back from your failures. Look at your neighbor and tell him to bounce back. Bounce back. Bounce back. You know, anyone who attempts anything, you're going to make mistakes. There's a learning curve. It's a learning process. That's what we do. You know, I, I'm amazed at the parents that expect their um, four-year-olds to act like 12, you know, or, or they'll say, oh, they're so mature for a four-year-old. Well, they might be mature for a four-year-old, but they're still four. Right. There's a lot of learning to do. And we can't expect children to act, that's four, act like 12 if they have not been taught the things that a 12-year-old has been taught. There's, there's, a, there's years in between where children are learning. Well, the same with us. God knows there's a learning curve. And sometimes we're so hard on ourselves that we expect ourselves to make it, to be perfect the very first time we attempt something. Now, it's not just me or anybody in here else like that, right? So be good to yourself. Know that there's a learning curve. If you're following God with your own heart, then get up and try again. So look at your neighbor and tell him, try again. Michael Jordan, does anybody know who that is? Basketball player. He is reported to have said, I've missed more than 9,000 shots in my career. I've lost almost 300 games. 26 times I've been trusted to take the winning shot in a game and missed. I have failed over and over and over again in my life, and that's why I succeed. Amen. There's a lot of wisdom there. Political and military leaders know the importance of dealing with failures with a positive attitude. 
British Prime Minister Winston Churchill he once said, success is never final. Failure is never fatal. It's courage that counts. And General Pat George Patton was also known to say that it's not how far you fall that matters. It's how high you bounce when you hit the bottom. And so as the people of God, we have to have the same attitude. Looking at life, knowing that God has a plan for our life, even when setbacks come to pull us off the path. Learning to face the setbacks and failures with confidence is all a part of our learning to walk by faith. Facing difficult situations without being overcome by depression and discouragement. And let me just tell you, a lot of times when something happens in our lives, people don't want to go through the pain. They want to find a shortcut. But I want to tell you, sometimes life just hurts. It's painful. And the only way that you can get through the pain is to deal with it and to trust God and know that tomorrow is going to be a better day. Amen? And depression is not your friend. Discouragement is your enemy. And if you find yourself in depression and discouragement, I'm going to tell you, if you will pray in five minutes in the Holy Spirit, you will move yourself out of that depression, you will move yourself out of that discouragement, and you begin to lift your hands and praise God. The enemy's not going to hang around any longer because you're praising the Holy Spirit. Amen? That's right. Amen. And so that's the way that you push through. We never give up. We never quit. We never throw in the towel. Because why? Because we are warriors. That's what we are. And we learn how to turn our failures into springboards of success. Amen. Amen. You know, amen. You know, if you're only attempting things that you can accomplish that are guaranteed to you, you are not working hard at all. Listen, if there's not a risk of failure then you're not taking a chance. You're not moving out. You're not going from glory to glory. That if I'm only accomplishing things that I know I can accomplish, then it's in my strength and nothing in God's strength. Amen? So we're going to have to do that. And I appreciate, you know, we have, I'm going to embarrass Jen a little bit here. You know, she's, she's uh, got, got two kids that are a handful, yet she's in nursing school full time and about to finish coming up this probably next year. You know, she could have easily said, that's too hard. You know, how can I do this? I got a family to take care of. Uh, and Jared's in a, was in a master's degree and he's working full time. They're both working really hard, but they're moving out further and accomplishing things. And you know, you've done this in your life, but if you would just sit back and wait for the perfect time, you'll never get that nursing degree. You'll never get the master's degree. You'll never get that job that you're expecting to do. And if you're not willing to take the risk to fail, then you're not going to have very great successes. I'll just say it that way. So I appreciate the faithfulness of our kids that are here today. I'll brag on them all day long. Amen. Amen. Where am I at? No, here I am. See, I'm not good with notes. Um, you know what? Peter, was Peter a failure? No. Did he fail? Yes. You know, and we know that on the last Passover, uh, that Jesus, there was some life-changing events that would happen for not only Peter, but for the disciples. And, uh, you know, Peter was a pretty confident guy. Um, in fact, he told Jesus, when Jesus said that he was going to go to the cross, he said, oh, no, you're not. He said, uh, I'll protect you. I'll be with you always. I'll never let you go. And I'll never let anything hurt you. And Jesus, uh, Jesus said to him in John 13, 37, he says, you know, uh, you hear Peter saying, I'll lay down my life for your sake. And Jesus said, oh, okay, really? Uh, will you lay down your life for my sake? He said, surely I say to you, the rooster will crow, will not crow until you have denied me three times. And Peter was like, what? He goes, no, this, this could never happen. I'm not that guy. I'm the guy that will fight to the end. I'm with you always. He had no intention of turning back. He had no intention of, of turning his back on Jesus. He said, I would fight to the death. This is Peter, right? But it was not long before that uh, Peter had to eat his words and did precisely what Jesus had foretold, right? Y'all remember this in the scriptures. And Jesus and his disciples, uh, they spent a lot of time in the Garden of Gethsemane. They walked and talked there. And, and this was also the place that Judas had, had betrayed him. And when the, 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 the chief priests had come to take him away, take Jesus away, what did, what did Peter do? He, took, he pulled a knife out, right? 
He was ready to go, and he was trying. He was going, I think, going for the throat, but missed and got the ear. And Jesus said, no, stop, stop. This isn't how we're going to do this. And uh, Peter was shocked that Jesus would allow himself to be taken, to be bound, to be arrested, to be led away, to stand and be interrogated and be before the high priest, humiliated and beaten. You know, and Peter, you know, after that was in the courtyard watching the whole thing. And sure enough, someone recognized him and three times he denied him. And then when the rooster crowed, Jesus in his eyes locked together and he knew that he had let Jesus down. He knew the realization of what he had done overwhelmed him. He knew he had failed. Peter had gone away. He had started with this overflowing confidence, but left, felt like a failure when he left. He left in bitterness and was overcome with grief. You know, every time we fall down and make a mistake, we have a decision to make. That's right. We were forced to choose how we're going to react, whether the setbacks are small or large, insignificant or life-changing. We have a choice. Which path do we take? You know, in those bitter hours and days following his denial of Christ, Peter had to do some hard thinking. It became a critical juncture in his life. He came face to face with his own human weakness. He was horrified to discover how vulnerable and fearful he could be. He thought he could do anything. He thought he could take on anyone. And the strong dose of reality t shook him to his very foundation. But Peter made the right choice. And as we read today, uh, generations have been inspired to read how Peter rebounded from an unspeakable setback to be a powerful tool in God's church. And in the words of Apostle Paul, he sorrowed in a godly manner, for godly sorrow produces repentance, leading to salvation, not to be regretted, but the sorrow of the world produces death. And Peter was sorrowful. He was hurt at his own actions. But yet God, Jesus, redeemed him, and he became the rock, the cornerstone of the church that we know today. Amen. Praise God. You know, when, when, we, when we fail, as Peter failed, when we have that repentance, uh, what that means is when we turn around and we decide that we're going to go as hard as we went one way, we're going to go the other way with this powerful, with a powerful zeal and a strong desire to overcome whatever failure we did because of our humanity. You know, in verse 11 it said, if, if enabled God to use him as a leader in the church, this is the guy that denied God Christ three times became this leader in this church that we are serving over 2,000 years later. This is the guy that would lose his temper. That's right. This is the guy that All, couldn't hold always. it together. That's right. This is the guy that said inappropriate stuff. But here he is a, well, his words are in the word of God. <laughs> Amen. And there are problems in life, and we've got to realize that, that, that just because you're a believer doesn't mean not, everything's going to be great. In fact, what's going to happen is not only are you going to have the same troubles everyone else is having, but you're going to have more because the enemy comes against for the righteousness. Because of your righteousness, he comes. Because of who you are in Christ. And you know, prior to uh, Jesus' death, he gave gave not only his disciples, but he gave us some powerful and encouraging instructions. In John 16, 31, he said that they would all desert him. He also said, you alone, you will be scattered to each his own, and you will leave me alone. And yet I am not alone, because the Father is with me. You know, the Father is with us. We are never alone. These Amen. things, I have spoken to you, that in me you may have peace, in the world, you will have tribulation. You will have tribulation. You know, and the Bible shows that in, there's going to be trials in our life. You know, that even while you're obeying God, there's, 
and striving toward that. There's going to be problems in your life. There's going to be things that happen. And sometimes these are our own fault. Get it. I get it. You know, we, we, we don't perfectly hear what God has to say. We're not, we think we can go off like Peter. You know, we can, no way, Jesus, I'm going to let this happen. And we're in our own pride and in our own abilities. We try to get these things. Uh, sometimes it's caused by, uh, by our pride, like I just mentioned, or maybe our weakness, or, or just we don't have the knowledge of it. Sometimes it's just out of our control. Things that are happening because of other people. Maybe we, our boss or whatever. We can't control other people's lives, and God will not control them, right? So things happen in our lives. We will have problems. But this same Peter that denied Christ also wrote in 1 Peter chapter 4, verses 12 and 13, Beloved, do not think it strange concerning fiery trial, which is to try you, as though some strange thing happened to you, but rejoice to the extent that you partake or partner, that's what that means, of Christ's sufferings, that when his glory is revealed, you may also be glad with exceeding joy. And yet, how many times do we get flustered because bad things happen? How many times do we say, you know, this is not supposed to happen to me? You know, we need to realize that the enemy comes against us regardless. Jesus told those, he said, listen, when bad things happen, don't just sink back or slink away or be despondent. He said, listen, you're going to have setbacks. John 16 says, these things I have spoken to you that you should not be made to stumble. Be of good courage. I have over come the world you know Amen. when we walk in that when we understand that when we admit that you know sometimes we either fall or things happen to us um we just deal with it and uh, instead of denying them or running away from them then we we repent or turn and move forward and and get the victory right right amen amen you know as parents we teach our children that there are going to be troubles. I remember when Jared was in school, he, he had a hard teacher. You know, have you ever had a hard teacher? You know, and, and what a lot of people do now, I don't, at least that's what they were doing then, is, is they would try to get a transfer to another teacher. But we intentionally left Jared in that class. You know why? Because sometimes you're going to have hard teachers. Sometimes you're going to have hard bosses. And as good parents that we are, we teach our children that sometimes things aren't going to go perfect and you're just going to have to deal with it. And uh, so we didn't, remember this? And we didn't, we didn't switch him out. And she was a hard person. But we teach our children as good parents about setbacks and difficulties, we, which helps them understand that life involves many frustrations. What does it mean to be frustrated? It means to be delayed. It means that what you have expected to happen isn't happening with the way you expected it to happen. It's frustrating you. And life involves many of these things. But it's only through the experience of these frustrations that we learn some things, right? If we develop that, that ability to have patience and tolerance and to work through these things. It enables us, it empowers us that, that during the, the adversity that, that we understand that it's a challenge that we can win and overcome, that we persevere in the face of it, that we don't allow it to push us down. You know, y'all have heard it before. If at first you don't succeed, you give up, right? No, you don't give up. If at first you don't succeed, you try and try again. And how many times, you know, you, you hear about Edison you know, failed so many times. You hear about Babe Ruth striking. He had more strikeouts than any other person, but he also had more home runs because he, he swung at the ball. And so you got you to gotta keep doing it. And we are God's children, and he is teaching us. And I'm not saying he's putting these things in our lives, but he's showing us because of them. We can learn that we persevere through this type of stress. And we got to face these things squarely. we got to have that courage because we have the Holy Spirit in us. And we know that we wouldn't be facing these things if we couldn't get through it because God would not allow it. Y'all have heard this, right? And, he's, and the way he doesn't allow it is he's given you the most powerful thing in all of creation. And that is his Holy Spirit in you. And with the Holy Spirit in you, you are greater than anything outside of you. But if you allow frustration to continually erode your faith and, and you don't face the reality and you just kind of curl up in a, in a fetal position running from the problems. You can't do that because those things don't make it go away. You can't put your head in the sand. They're, as soon as you pull it back up, there's the problem. 
but we admit them and we confess them and our mistakes. And we take the first step to successfully bouncing back. Amen? And, Amen. And, you know, awareness is the first step into being delivered, into being healed. Amen. If you have stuff in your life, you know, everybody's had stuff. Everybody, we're, we're not born, you know, in this world. We're born and then we live life and we develop bad habits and we've got to get in the Word and we've got to change our bad habits and change our words. And and that's okay. Right? <coughs> that's how we, that's what we're learning to do. We're learning to mature in the faith. And, and, you know, Jesus tells us that we have to become mature. In James chapter 1, verses 2, it says, Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Let perseverance have its work so that you may be mature and complete and not lacking anything. So facing trials is the testing of our faith. But it's not God who's testing our faith. He knows our faith. It's a testing from the enemy. But what the enemy doesn't understand is that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. And that perseverance works in you to make you mature and complete, not lacking anything. Amen. And the message says it like this. Consider it a sheer gift, friends. When tests and challenges come at you from all sides, you know that under pressure your faith life is forced into the open and it shows its true colors. So don't try to get out of anything prematurely. Let it do its work so you become mature, well-developed, and not deficient in any way. And so when you are maturing in the faith, don't think that God has left you or forgotten you. Because Deuteronomy 31.6 says, Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or terrified of them. For the Lord your God goes with you. He will never leave you or forsake you. So while you're walking through the trial, keep your eyes on God, knowing, knowing that he's got a plan. I tell myself that all the time. You know, when stuff happens in my life, I go, God's got a plan. God's got a plan. What am I doing? I'm reaffirming, reaffirming to my spirit that I'm trusting God and that he's going to get me through this difficult situation. You know, it's not a surprise to the Lord what you're going through. Right. He's not looking at Jesus in the Holy Spirit, wringing his hand, saying, oh, my gosh, what are we going to do here? No. He knows what, what you're going through. And this testing of your faith is a working something out in you to get your comeback but help is here that's right and you know there's the key that you read there pastor brenda in, in deuteronomy was um do not be afraid right here yeah do not be afraid because when we walk in fear we will not walk in faith amen and if we allow fear to overcome us we're not going to re be resilient we're not uh, faith works, I mean, fear works against our bouncing back, work, works against our, our, uh, our resilience. Amen? Amen. So think about the comeback story of Moses in the Bible. You know, Moses was a man with an anger problem. And one day he witnessed an Egyptian beating a Hebrew slave, so he kills the Egyptian and buries him in the sand. And so Moses took matters in his own hands the only way he knew how. Yet a crime is still a crime. And because of that crime, Moses had to leave Pharaoh's house, his home. So he was banished to the wilderness where he did for years was ten sheep. But then at a time when many would be thinking about their last chapters on earth, God spoke to Moses out of a burning bush and called him into a position of leadership. I know it looks that Life has passed you by, God said, but I'm going to use you to lead my people out of bondage in Egypt and into the promised land. Moses had a great comeback story. He came back over his anger and failed opportunities. But he also had a speech impediment and a lousy self-confidence. He didn't think he could do anything useful for God. But along with his brother Aaron, he went to Pharaoh and he told Pharaoh that God told him to let his people go. Eventually, Pharaoh did that and the whole nation had a comeback story. 
Moses relapses, disobeys God. A few times after that, God wouldn't let him go into the promised land as a consequence. But in the New Testament, there's a story, and I love this, about Jesus hiking up on a mountain with two of his disciples. And then something supernatural happened. Jesus' clothes turned a radiant white, and he shone in brilliant glory in the presence of the disciples. And along with Jesus, two others appeared, and one of them was our friend Moses. In his all-time most powerful comeback, in the grace of God, there is a comeback for people who've already had a comeback and need another comeback because you might need more than one. And the Bible is full of stories about the lives of people who failed and through the power of God experienced a great comeback. In fact, the entire story of humanity is a story of people who have stumbled and fallen, and yet somehow in this ocean of God's grace and mercy, he provides a comeback for anyone who puts their faith and hope in Jesus. So in the end, we find that no matter what we might be walking through, say this with me, no matter what I'm walking through, we can still have confidence that Jesus is the God of the comeback Amen. and that our story is not over as long as Jesus is in it. And everybody needs a comeback. And everybody is offered a comeback. And no matter what our obstacles are, no matter what mistakes we've made, no matter if we're in a season of wandering or darkness, God's purpose and plan will still prevail. He turns our setbacks into comebacks. Amen. 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 Our setbacks into comebacks. You know, God knows our comings and goings. God knows everything, doesn't he? He knows your past. He knows, you know, God already knows everything. He already knows. He knows your potential, but he also knows what you're going to fulfill in that potential. And I love that about him. He set a path before you. And he's not only set the path there, but he's leading and guiding you on that very path he has set. He shines a light on this path. You know, this isn't rocket science, is it? It's not that hard. You know, in 2019, we need to be led by the Spirit. Praise God. Walk that path that God, I think you've heard, you've been preaching on this, hasn't it? Stay on the path. Stay on the Walk path. Walk the path that God has set before you. Because this is where our healing is. This is where our potential is. This is where our reconciliation is. This is where our prosperity is, is the path of God. Not off the path, but on the path. This is where your deliverance is, your breakthrough, your victory. You know, his plan for you includes everything we need for life and godliness. You know, God has a plan for you. Jeremiah 29, 11 says, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you a hope and a future. You know, in 2 Peter 1, 3, it says, His divine power has given us everything we need for a godly life through our knowledge of Him who called us by His own glory and goodness. Read the message. What it, how it the, says message the message says, Everything that goes into a life of pleasing God has been miraculously given to us by getting to know personally and intimately the one who invited us Amen. to God. I love it because she, you know, she has a Texan ac Texas accent and the message is Texan, I that's, believe. That's my version. So, you know, but we got to get serious with God. We got to get serious on the path that he has for us. We got to be serious in this relationship that God has called us to. It's not just a Sunday, Wednesday relationship. It's not just a Christmas, uh, Easter relationship. You know, we got to quit making excuses. This is the, that's why we fast. That's one thing I'm going to be doing for fast this year is, is finding out what God wants me to do for 2019, what us as a family to do for 2019, and what we as a church for 2019. And then I want to be serious about that, not just do it for three weeks or so, right? Listen, you are who you are, and God loves you just as you are, right? You don't have to be anybody else. God created you to be you. But we're not going to play games with God. God doesn't play games with us. You know, we got to got to be quick with that plan of God. Got to be quick to do what God has called us to. You know, he's not messing around and neither are we. We're Amen. going to get on it, right? Galatians 5, 7 through 10 says, you were running a good race. Who cut in on you? 
to keep you from obeying the truth, right? The enemy, that's who. It's Satan that cuts in on you. That kind of persuasion does not come from the one who calls you. Jesus didn't cut in on you. A little yeast works through the whole batch of dough. I am confident in the Lord that you will take no other view. The one who is throwing you into confusion, whoever that may be, will have to pay the penalty. Listen, whoever cut you off, it was not God. Right. God isn't going to get you on get you off the path. He's going to keep you on the path. Right. There are only two answer, answers, either yourself or the enemy got you off the path. You know, confusion, y'all heard this, confusion is not of God. It's a demonic spirit to keep you off the path. Who cut in on you? Could it be that we opened up the door? It could be. Could be. be. And if you did, why? Why? The word sabotage is defined by deliberately destroying or to obstruct. Who is sabotaging you? Am I sabotaging myself? Who is deliberately destroying you and obstructing you from God's path? Well, Pastor Brenda read it earlier, John 10.10. 10. It's the thief that comes only to kill, steal, or to steal, kill, and destroy, right? But Jesus says, I have come to give you life and, ha- and you shall have it to the full. So we know that, that's the, that the enemy is the saboteur, right? The enemy is the, sabot- is the one who sabotages and who destroys, who obstructs. But we've got to keep the door closed to the devil. Amen. We can't let him sabotage our life. Amen. God can certainly get you out of anything. However, why open the door to the enemy in the first place? If God clearly speaks to you, and I know that he does, then why open the door to the same old junk that we've been living in, right? The same old junk that we've been delivered from? Let's make a decision in 2019. This is our year of power. This is our year of resilience, our year of bouncing back from the discouragements. And you know what? Discouragements don't go annually. They continue. Right. You know, they don't care what year it is, right? Right. But neither do victories. Amen. Praise God. So this is our year for bouncing back. This is our year for doing that. And you know what? Discouragement just will keep you from God's best. God has great plans for us. But it's up to us to choose those plans. You know, he doesn't force us to to stay on the path. It simply comes down to this. Put God first in your life. Right. Amen. You put God first, you have a better marriage. You put God first, you have better relationships at work. You put God first, you have a better relationship with your children. You know, make a stand. Make a stand. Choose God. Choose God not only to be your Savior, but the Lord of your life, so that when darkness comes... You have the light to guide you on the path. Amen. 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 You know, just before his death, Jesus gave his disciples tremendous encouragement. He told them about his coming kingdom. And in doing so, he was not referring to something abstract in our hearts. He was foretelling the establishment of a literal kingdom on earth. And he went on to say in John 14, 1 and 2, he said, Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, also believe in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would not have told you. I go and I prepare a place for you. This is what was on Jesus' mind during his last night before his crucifixion. Think about it. In practically the same breath, he told Peter that he would deny him He turned around to tell the disciples of their inspiring destiny. He spoke about a future. He was not just focusing on the suffering he would endure or the discouragement that they would feel upon his leaving. No, he focused on the vision of what is coming. He fixed their eyes on the kingdom and he wanted them to play their part when it's set up on earth. When we drop the ball or we make mistakes or we suffer from problems, does God want us to hang our heads and feel like failures? Absolutely not. Does he want us to shrink away in self-pity? No. He wants us to focus on the future. Amen. He desires that we recognize the great potential that he gives to us to those who are willing to submit to his will and to his spirit. And as we go in 2019... Focus on what God has for you in this year, not what you left behind in 2018. 
Amen? You know, it's, um, it's amazing how God made us. And we have emotions, and we have thoughts, and we have this physical body. And God speaks to us from spirit to spirit. And as he speaks to us from spirit to spirit, it's that encouragement. Did you know the Holy Spirit still encourages us today? And he tells you not to give up. He tells you not to quit. He tells you that everything's going to be okay. Just to get up and keep plugging away. Look at your neighbor and tell him, keep plugging. Keep plugging. Keep plugging. Right? Yeah. We got to keep plugging away. We got to keep pushing through. We can't ever give up. And I tell you, you, you say to, you know, what, what kind of circumstances would we give up? And you guys know me. And you know my background and you know where I come from. And I'm going to tell you, you don't ever give up. As long as you have breath in your body, you fight to the very end until Jesus returns. Amen? Amen. What are we fighting for? We're fighting for our marriages. We're fighting for our children. We're fighting for our families. We're fighting for our state. We're fighting for our nation. We're fighting for the righteousness of God to prevail. That's what we're fighting for. And there's not a lot of things in this world that are worth fighting for. But I want to tell you, by the Spirit of God, when you do what He says, righteousness is worth fighting for. Amen. Amen? Righteousness and holiness in a world that seems to have lost its mind. Right? Righteousness is worth fighting for. Yes. And so don't say, well, I can't do it anymore. Because you can. You can do it. You can do it. I can do it. And we can do it together because we have the same power that raised Jesus from the dead living on the inside Amen. of us. And if that power is living on the inside of me, living on the inside of you, then you can do whatever God has called you to do in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen? So don't ever say you quit. You give up. You're done. Get that out of your vocabulary and just say, hey, devil the fight has just begun right not my family not today That's not right. my church not today amen amen because we're fighters and we're warriors in the kingdom of god and it's a good fight and it's a good Cause fight because we, we win amen right? amen amen you know, the, go ahead i was just gonna say the holy spirit while you were talking uh said something to me and it was for us he said you know i have a plan to get you debt free Praise God. You just got to ask me. I receive it. He said, I got a plan to get you healed. Praise God. You just got to ask me what it is. I got a plan to reconcile you with your family members or you with your workers or you with whoever. Because I am the, I have a ministry of reconciliation. Praise you just got to ask me what it Thank is. Thank you, Jesus. And, then, and he says, once I tell you what it is, you just got to do it. And it will come to pass in your life. Amen? Amen. So he's got a plan. Whatever you need for this year, he's got a plan. Just ask him and then follow the plan. Don't get off the plan. Because what happens is if it doesn't happen in the time that we think it ought to happen or if it sounds like, well, if this is the plan, God, you know, trust not only, don't, not just trust God, but trust the Holy Spirit in you that you heard from God, that you're able to hear the plan. And then follow that plan. Don't deviate from the plan and watch how God will move in our lives. Amen. Amen. God has I a plan. I receive it. Yes. That's good. That's good. I receive it because God has a plan for us. And if we're willing to submit to his rule in our life, if we come to understand the purpose for problems, that, they, uh, that we grow by allowing the word to correct us and asking him to empower us through his Holy Spirit. You know, problems are going to come. Stuff is going to come. And we don't go, grow because of the problems. We grow because of what we do with the problems. Right. As we get into the Word of God and begin to pick up our sword and begin to use the sword against the problems, we get stronger. And that's, that's what God, that's the way that God has intended it for be. He knew there was going to be trouble in this world. He knew you were going to have ups and downs. He knew that the enemy is rampant on earth. And he knew you were going to make mistakes. And he knew that we'll stumble and suffer sometimes. We'll have problems as long as we're in the flesh. But God tells us to face our trials and difficulties positively. And in the end, it's not the setbacks that he's most concerned about. 
is how well you come back. Amen. So for me, I'm ready for 2019 to be my comeback year. Amen. Amen. Comeback Amen. year. My comeback year. Yes. And so, so as you're going through the 21 day fast and you have space in your journals, write down the things that you want to see a breakthrough in deliverance for the year 2019. Habakkuk tells us to write it on a tablet and make it plain and then run with it. You know, there's something, I'm a visual learner, and so there's just something about seeing it in front of me. It gets in my spirit. I speak it out, and I go, yes, and then I don't forget or, or, or forget what I wrote down. I look at it every day and know that God is good on his promise, and he's going to do what he says he's going to do. Amen. Amen? And you Amen. know, if he does it for me, if he does it for you, he'll do it for whoever, whosoever believes. Praise God. Amen? Amen. So this is our comeback year, right? And we just make sure that every time we get, just like a basketball that's in, that's, that is inflated, right? Inflated? Yes. That has air in it. You know, it'll bounce right back, you know. But don't be deflated. You know, don't don't hit the ground and just stay there. Get up. Uh, I, can I tell a story real quick? Yeah. Um, when I was when I was 16, uh, I was in the rodeo club. I'm, I grew up in Texas, so I was in the rodeo club, and uh, and I was about to ride this white Charlet bull. Um, I was getting ready to get on this bull. Uh, I was a bull rider, and uh, the guy in front of me. I was watching him from the fence. And he came out, and I was about to, I was next. And he came out, and, uh, and he, he didn't, didn't go the eight seconds, fell off, and literally the bull stepped on his face. This is right before I'm about to ride, right? And, and he got up and took off running, and, and now I'm up there. And what am I thinking about? You know, I'm thinking, <laughs> I'm thinking why am I here? How am I going to get off this bull? <laughs> you know? And so I get on. And, and I didn't ride it. I rode it about four seconds. And, uh, but I came off. But here's, here's the difference. See, he didn't jump right up. <laughs> and as soon as I tell you, I barely, there was barely any dust made. When I hit that ground, I was up. And no Amen. bull was stepping on my face. Why? Because I was going to be resilient. And so I tell you what, when I came off, I don't even remember hitting the ground. I was up and running. And I ran to that fence. I even jumped the fence. I was out of that ring. Uh, but that's the resilience. When I thought about being resilient, I think about that bull ride. It didn't last but four seconds, but that ground, it didn't hardly touch me when I was up and running. So. <laughs> and, you know, that's how we got to be with the devil. When he that's comes right. and he... Uh, you know, he's mean and he brings stuff on us and he makes us ride it. We're ride it out. And then he bucks us off and throws us off and is ready to stomp us into the ground because you have the spirit of God on the inside of you. You're able to jump right up and jump that fence and overcome anything that the devil can bring against you. Amen. 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 Praise God. And so we have the victory. We have the victory all the time, but it's the matter, the battle is, is what you think in here. And if you think you've lost, then you've lost. But if you know that Jesus lives on the inside of you, then he has overcome the world. And since he has overcome the world and lives on the inside of you, that means you have overcome the world. Amen. So this Praise is our God. year of comeback. Year of comeback. We're comebacks. Amen. 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 And, you know, and then God can turn... You know, don't focus on the setbacks. Don't focus on what's going wrong in your life. Take the focus off. Begin to praise and worship the Holy Spirit. And God will push you through into your comeback. Amen. And as we come to the altar today, Pastor Ross and I, are, we're going to be here. And we're going we're gonna to make ourselves available to pray with you and agree with you in prayer. But I want to tell you something. Be serious about 2019 live this year on purpose don't just be distracted by the busy busyness of life and the things that happen but live your life on purpose every single day and by the end of next year you're going to turn around and you're going to see this was my comeback year amen Praise God.